Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a huge reaction to a brand new project by Virtual Riot, his third studio album titled Stealing Fire, out now on Monster Cat, and we're going to do a first reaction listen to the whole album front to back. Uh, there were a couple singles that were released beforehand, but we're going to listen to the whole project at this point. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm a huge fan of Virtual Riot. This is an almost hour-long album, and so this is going to be... A uh, chock full of a ton of stuff. I'm assuming at some point I have not heard anything other than the singles. And uh, there's a ton of variety in genres at some point. It seems like um, as Monster Cat has uh, displayed genre-wise, there's some bass, dubstep, trap, bass house, even ambient, like drum, uh, drum and bass, halftime, mid-tempo. Like there's there's a lot of different variety of tones and styles uh, from at least on paper for this record. So uh, without any further ado, let's hop into it though. And uh, yeah, listen to this brand new album. Uh, this is Virtual Riot Stealing Fire, and we are starting with the first track, Embark. Here we go. I'm assuming this is just going to be like an atmospheric intro of sorts that is kind of just, um, yeah, just an intro. But we'll see. Almost three minutes long? Could be something crazy. Okay, heavy on the strings off the start, and this like, atmosphere. Ooh. going here. We're really atmospheric to start this, like we're really building the tension. Creepy. Okay. Okay, so it's almost like a it's like a semi uh, continuous record at this point, at least the first song, because it's not a it's not a full run into the next one. At least I heard the first hit of the first song, um, or the second song, I should say. Uh, but it, it it definitely has a, a sense of tone and atmosphere that matches from at least one to another up to this point. So, uh, yeah, embark starting the album off uh, in a very intro style. It very much is a tone setter, uh, and we're I'm I'm very curious to see where we're gonna go with this stylistically. If we kind of just have this um, operatic, almost like not operatic. A, a very cinematic string section, if that's going to be a constant theme throughout, especially because we've got a couple interludes on the record. And so I'm curious to see if we're going to get a return of that kind of uh, more grand cinematic tone. But um, other than that, great intro. I think it, I think it's good at establishing a narrative. To some extent, there's some creepiness, some uh, real intensity. And so we'll see uh, how much we get going, though. But we're going to move into the first real track, I guess, of the album. Uh, this is Stealing Fire. Here we go. Thank you. 
funky and a little like trappy too almost. Lots of lead-in. Okay. Lots of fun. As a lead single, like as a as a title, as a tight single tight title track. That's what I'm looking for. Um, this, is, this is pretty great. This has a lot of energy to it. So I'm intrigued to see where we're gonna go in the back half of this. Very different than I, what we I got in the first drop. Our, our way that people can be introduced to music. Huh. And a long outro. So it's not a like a, a not not very continuous of a record, I would say holistically. So um yeah, uh, the title track, Stealing Fire, I really enjoyed that. So much so that I definitely enjoyed that more than the singles that were released beforehand. Um, the front half of this track sounded a lot like uh, Skrillex Quest for Fire. I really did think it, I, I felt like it did. Um, especially because it had this like, Skrillex, when, when Quest for Fire came out, had this weird bounce between like this like bass house and this trap style. And I think he rode that line very well, Skrillex in particular. And Virtual Riot is doing that same sort of uh, notion of riding that bass house sort of trap line, but doing it in a pretty different way than Skrillex ended up doing on Quest for Fire. Um, also, just now realizing that it's, he's, if it, did he steal the fire from the quest? Skrillex, Skrillex got, found it with the quest and then now Virtual Riot stealing it, the fire? Yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed that. Uh, the second drop felt very like core Virtual Riot, not so much in the dubstep sound, but just like uh, where he went with the different elements and like this like really like glitchy kind of like stuttering and then this kind of like more analog synthesized, very digital sounding like just lead melody and uh, and the like almost crunchiness and compression added to the end that had a little bit more of a, a dubstepy feel. Um, without being kind of a dubstep sound that that leaned a lot more into that trap style of genre, but um, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I really liked that quite a bit, actually. That was uh, like I said, so far my favorite single of um, or my favorite track of the singles. I'm assuming this is going to be the title uh, or the the release single, I should say. But um, yeah, let's hop into the next track though. This is uh, this is Need Get. 
Um, this one will be, uh, yeah, uh, another interesting one. Let's see, the genre on this is uh, trap. So last time we had a base house in particular, but this one is more uh, specifically trap. So without any further ado, let's hop into it. This is Need Get. Oh yeah, very trappy to start. Okay, that was uh, Need Get, uh, and that was very much uh, a just like balls to the walls, just a go absolutely nuts uh, track uh, that was very much in that trap realm that uh, felt like a little bit of a clashing of tone between that and even Steven Stealing Fire that had a bit of a trap sound to it. They, I will say my mini gripe so far that I'm leaning into doesn't feel like this is like a, like there's a real through line of the album. It kind of just feels like a bunch of just bangers, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but it's just kind of, I'm recognizing now early on that this isn't meant to, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, uh, that this won't be like a, a high concept album in some sense. It kind of just, it just goes and it goes and it gives uh, without having uh, a real through line one way or another, particularly the way that simulation did. Um, and what uh, Virtual Riot did uh, on that one. And so, uh, yeah, th this one just so far feels like f fine. Like it's a good, it's a great trap song. I, I don't mind it to that extent. I just, I didn't feel like there was a ton of like real build atmospherically or tonally into something that was maybe fresh and unique. Um, it has all of the classic Virtual Riot uh, sounds and styles with the big growls and and heavy punchy bass lines. And uh, this does feel like a very Virtual Riot style song uh, just in a trap format. So uh, one that I, I didn't feel too like over the moon about, but another track I'm like, oh, this is still really solid. This is great. So uh, but with that, let's hop into the next track. This is Dino Killer at five and a half minutes minutes in length uh, is kind of a crazy long song for this album so far. So uh, without any further ado, here we go. This is Dino Killer. Scientists across the planet believe that the okay. last of these creatures roamed to the earth millions of years ago. But as it turns out, this species is all but extinct. See, this like story just kind of just came out of nowhere for this one song. So...
Transformers Dinos. What are they called, like the Dino Cons or something? I don't know. Like mechanized dinosaurs. It's excision! Big lead in. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You can be shit Oh my goodness. Tribal drums in here. How many fake outs are we gonna do this time? We had what, five last time? Goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, Dino Killer. Uh, yeah, not my favorite song, uh, I will say. 
Uh, I've never been typically a fan of the really big, abrasive, metallic, synthesized dubstep that just is in your face and loud and aggressive. And so, uh, in that sense, this song really wasn't for me in any capacity, but just because that's that's a, a style I do not resonate with typically. Um, so take that opinion with a grain of salt. Um, I just I I I get the fake outs. I'm like cool, whatever. Like that's fun to some extent. Um, but on the second run. Like, why why bother the not yet? Because well, that's clearly not going to be yet. Like, when you're saying not yet as it's building and you're not, like, you're not letting it, like, come down for a second to, like, fake it out. You're kind of just saying it for the sake of saying it. Um, because I, I think they didn't fully commit to the 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 going the full fake out uh, twice in a row. Uh, and just wanted to go with a regular build in the second half. Um, I, am I'm am I reading into this too much, or is this feel like a sort of excision disc track, like disc track? Like I, I I might be reading into this too much, and I have no idea what the relationship between excision and virtual ride is like. But this feels kind of like uh, when you say Dino Killer, excision uh, famously has like a, a T Rex, a metallic T Rex as their kind of um, insignia, their branding. And when you say it's a Dino Killer, it makes it seem like this song is sort of is is killing excision and the idea that uh, that this is. This is what Excision tries to do, uh, but just better. This this song will kill Excision's career kind of thing. I'm probably reading into it too much. I don't know exactly. Uh, maybe Excision has some production credit on this. Probably, I doubt it, but... Um yeah, I it, it just feels a little weird in that sense because this is a very excision like track. Like this has all of the the makings and stylistic structure and tone and like intensity of an excision song um just made by Virtual Riot. And so I don't really understand this one, especially in the makeup of the track list of this album so far, uh, having done this more bass house trap centric sound up to this point and now going so heavily abrasive um, in that dubstep sound. It also doesn't sound like a lot of the singles that were released up to this point. So uh, this is just an interesting one for me. Uh, I'll say an interesting one in that sense and I'll leave it there. So uh, but let's hop into the next track though. This is a Star Destroyer. I'm very curious to see where we're going to go stylistically with this one. So here we go. This is Star Destroyer. A digital computer connected to an organ console makes it possible for tones to be developed with unprecedented accuracy. Okay. Okay, I'm getting into it. I'm feeling it. Ooh, that is like a... That's a fun sound. It's a little subtle, but it works really well. You can all go fuck yourself. wild like tempo wise of the song like it is just so it's it's like it's almost like it's swung it's on the offbeat so it's just such a like yeah it's very interesting Okay, back to the... 
trap time. Oh my goodness, what a wild song this is. Dang. Okay, so now that we're at least a couple songs in and knowing what the singles have been up to this point, so we've sort of listened to eight full songs at this point, um, this feels, the album feels really like separated into individual songs, which obviously that's what an album is. But um, they don't feel super cohesive at this point. They don't feel like they're intentionally trying to bleed into one another in their tone and sound design and even genre. Um, they do feel like individually packaged stories and units um, and this is feels more compilation-esque rather than uh, a more conceptual style album, which I think um, my guess is because Virtual Riot played that off with his, his last one. Uh, and so this one is a little bit more of a, I'm just going to go hard and do whatever I want. And here's just a ton of fire tracks. So... Um, that being said, I, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. That one was a little funky. That first drop was really weird. Um, and I don't want to just be a hater because it had that, like, offbeat sync, like, I don't even, I don't think it's syncopated, but it's just, like, it had, like, this weird, like, and beat or, like, this, like, kind of swung into it at times, too. And, um, it was just, a. it was just, it felt weird. It, it felt like I wasn't, uh, I couldn't, like, get into it. And then it didn't do it in the back half, which made me feel like I didn't really understand why it existed in the first place. Um, typically, when a song has a very different kind of uh, style of tempo and beat, I you take the first kind of drop or first half of the song to get used to it, uh, and then you really get into it in the second half. But then we kind of had, like, three really different, like, styles that time. We had that, like, weird, like, I'll, I'll call it a swung section in the beginning, and then this middle, like, almost side trance, like, the, like, doing, like, the, like, kind of hardcore, and then back to a more kind of simple trap beat. And so... It was just a really weird mix conglomerate of a bunch of different styles and tones, and I didn't really feel like um, it really hit the nail on the head in, in one of those in particular. So, um, yeah, I, I'm okay on that one, I'll say for sure. So, uh, But let's move into the next track. This is Given to You, which we have already heard up to this point, by the way. Uh, this was the first single to be released. Uh, this is Rez and Virtual Riot featuring 1 2 Grod. So, here we go. This is Give Into You. subtle growls.
applied with this like really <laughs> cinematic style of outro a lot of these songs have been so far. So and this one has a long outro too. So uh, yeah, I get not that long, but just long fade, I should say. Uh, that is given to you with Rez, uh, and One True God. Uh, I originally did a reaction to that. If you want to see my original, uh, reaction, I will try to remember to put it right there, but, um, if not, yeah, this song I really enjoyed. Um, I thought it sounded a lot more Rez than it did Virtual Riot. I think, um, more so than anything, this sounded like a, just a great Rez song, uh, that Virtual Riot was just a part of in terms of, of mixing and mastering more so than anything. But I'm realizing now, uh, having listened to more of the album, that, uh, the mixing feels like a lot cleaner on this song than the other tracks have been up to this point. I, it feels a lot more uh, like a condensed track where so far uh, we've had some songs that are like really like intense and just have a, a sense of like, you're like, you're like really intense on like a metering scale. Like you feel like you're like hitting the reds all the time. Uh, but this one felt a lot more, um, yeah, like a lot more just streamlined, a lot more well polished is maybe a good way to put it. That, uh, that I think the other tracks didn't have, which made it, like, a, is someone that's a little more, I don't know, that cares about it a little bit more, like, maybe like myself, um, it feels a, almost a little jarring that, like, we went from something like the last song in Star Destroyer that had this, like, really all over the place, like, just in terms of intensity and going to just a pretty um, relatively linear song. Um, so, yeah, interesting. I, I still really like the song. I think it's great, and I, I think it's some of Rez's best. I like the mid-tempo on this one as well. Uh, but it just feels weird. It feels weird in the album run right now, I must say. So, um, but yeah, other than that, let's hop into the next one. This is another song that was released beforehand. This is Scorched Earth. Here we go. This was the most recent uh, single to be released up until the uh, album got released, so uh, this is a pretty recent one. A lot more techno leaning on this one. Big jungle vibes, though, in this, too. I would say the more I listen to it as well. Just because before and after just have so much, like there's such full sounds. Too. 
Yeah, the song is just like stylistically a little all over the place for me. I think more so than not. Slower song too, comparatively to the other ones that had a lot of a lot going on, even in the in betweens. Yeah, and then the garage finale. or the bullet chill. Yeah, I, uh... I, I, I feel whatever on that track in particular. Um, that was another one for me where it just... It, it felt like there was a too much trying to go on one way or another that uh, Virtual Riot just was kind of lost in the sauce a little bit where there was just uh, too many conflicting sounds and styles and... Um, I just, I feel like this is maybe a microcosm uh, of the holistic record for me right now in terms of um, yeah, j just feeling like there, there's not a sense of uh, real, like, yeah, cohesiveness, I think is, is the word I've been looking for for the most part here, where it just feels like there's a lot happening and also not a lot happening. And there's kind of just like, yeah, I don't know, just somewhere in between there where like a lot of the other songs even had this so much more of a, like an intense uh, like midsection where this one was just a lot more just like almost relaxed and a little bit more down to earth while still being pretty like nothing to me. I don't know. This one just, it was a weird one for me. I, I must say weird one for me. So uh, but let's move into the next track. This is the interlude. This is impending, which I I'll talk about it after, but um, here we go. This is the, uh, this is impending by interlude or the <laughs> impending interlude. Okay, I guess that is impending. Um, I I have to ask, uh, why? <laughs> why is that a song? Uh, why did we do an interlude in the middle of the album and it didn't really lead into anything or do anything and there's no story and... Why is that? Is it just like is it just like a palate cleanser? Is is that the point of this one? I'm I, I struggle a lot with 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 interludes like this in albums that don't tell a story that don't like what is the, the an interlude is is designed to tell um, to bring the listener upon uh, into a deeper level of narrative storytelling, and that was just not that. Uh, I, just, I think I just say so. I just don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get why we needed an interlude there. I don't know what, why. But regardless, uh, let's move into the next track. This is "Believe What You Want." Here we go. Like, sure, it went into the that song a little bit, but I don't know.
this feels like pure virtual ride here. Okay, believe what you want. Um, this song definitely has grown on me as it's been uh, released more. I uh, or as I've listened to it more, I should say. Uh, this feels like a pure Virtual Riot song. This feels like Virtual Riot in like tip top form. Uh, that feels like more of a classic style from Virtual Riot. Um, th this is a, a more kind of streamlined, well packaged, put together dubstep tune um, that is a bit of giving the fans what sort of they want uh, in in terms of a nerve if a new Virtual Riot song that is a lot of what uh, they would have known from the past, I should say. So this feels like it could have been off of uh, his latest record, even his, his first two. Uh, and this is just one that I, that works well. Uh, th this is another just explanation or another example of uh, Virtual Riot just doing what he does best, uh, of just creating a more um, heavy, just more dense dubstep sound uh, with lots of dancing, uh, bright, and also really dark elements all throughout. And this just feels like virtual riot in his prime i must say so uh, i like that song a lot uh, that's probably my favorite single now that i think about it now that i've listened to all the songs in the context of the record at this point not i guess we're still halfway through but um yeah so i, I really enjoyed it let's move on to the next one 
Okay, up next, we've got New Energy. Uh, we are done all of the tracks we have heard now up to this point, and we are into full new territory with uh, a final, I guess, technically seven songs, as if you include this one as the 10th. So um, here we go. This is New Energy. <laughs> Very different, a lot, a lot brighter and happier. Oh, like a wet, bubbly almost sound. song is? Are we just like this airy, like, summer vibe? Okay. Volcano has erupted on summer vacation. I was taking that one in uh, for the most part. I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, I, I I don't really understand where we were going with that one. Um, I I I get the the title is very true in New Energy. Um, again, why? I I kind of just don't understand putting a track like that in the tenth of a sixteen song album. I kind of just don't um, get it. But hey, like it's a fun song. I actually really like it. Like it's a pretty cool vibe, and and I love the production of it. It just um, in the grand scheme of the album, I just don't understand it stylistically or tonally even. Um, just with how different it was. So I just. I'm surprised it's on the the album. Yeah, again, I just I, I feel like I liked it. It is a nice like cheery. It, it felt like it's like you're on summer vacation and then things go awry at some point and then things get fixed at the end. But it just is like a like this is so different than like believe what you want but that just came before it and even the interlude before that. And so I uh, I'm a little confused. I will say uh, moving into uh, the this later half of this album. So. 
Uh, but let's move right along uh, into Nights on Fire 24, or 2024. Uh, I was going to say 2014. Uh, here we go. Here's Nights on Fire 2024. Before long, since I met you, feel so strong, feel so strong, yeah. I know I can really trust you, do no wrong, you can't do wrong, yeah. Listen. You know. Sexy DNB. Listen. Oh, yeah. Just the vibe of new energy more so than anything else on the album. <laughs> Nights on Fire, uh, that one is, like, fun. Like, uh, individually as a tune, I think it's a great DNB track that has a very uh, smooth, danceable, almost, like, sexy rhythm to it. It kind of just, it just goes. I, I love the vocal sample, whoever was on that feature, I guess, in some capacity. Um, it, it just had a sense of energy and life that... Uh, <laughs> I will say, um, uh, very uh, different than the rest of the project at this point, which I feel like I'm saying a lot. Um, but in a vacuum, I think that song is, is quite fun. Uh, I think it's got a good beat to it. I love the little um, fun samples thrown in here and there, like from Navi, from Legend of Zelda, and just like the yeah little intricate elements that keep it kind of moving and grooving uh, along. So uh, I like the track individually. I must say, uh, why is this 2024? Why are we titling this 2024? It makes it feel like there is a, uh, a sense of uh, this was an old song that is finally being released now, and this has been from years prior, and it doesn't feel like... Um, I, I feel like when you slap a year at the end of a song, you're, you're like very clearly telling everyone that the song wasn't meant for this album. Like It wasn't meant to be there, and you're kind of just slotting it in because... Uh, it was it was an earlier whip, an earlier ID that is now finally making its way onto the project now, uh, and so and, and maybe I'm just being a little critical because I'm a sucker for storytelling um, and, and narrative through lines, but um, yeah, I uh, 
I, I like the tune. I like the tune in the vacuum. But uh, let's move on to our next track. This is Ridiculous. Uh, and no, that's just the name of the song. So uh, here we go. This is Ridiculous. Oh, very bright still. Where do I know that melody? I feel like I've heard this melody before. Damn, it's ridiculous. Oh! Okay, wild uh, first half of the song. Um, yeah, <laughs> just wild. <laughs> it's got this another like summery kind of vibe to it. Psycho mode. What in the world? That song was wild. Um absolute insanity uh was that track what in the world um and in like a good way like that that was nice and intense and i really loved the vibe of it um it was this kind of halftime almost like drum step style of song uh that had again like another just bright kind of lighter feel to it while still keeping like a, a really under like a an underhanded just doom, like intensity distorted compressed uh bass uh line bass section and so uh wild song even within the realm of dnb this was very different than the one right before it in um, nights on fire and obviously because they were from different times because that one was from an old idea or whatever but uh my goodness uh, this um maybe just because i'm i'm so much of a, a monster cat guy but um it sounded like that the very first half of the song sounded like impeccable like it sounded like mr bill's impeccable quite a bit um the especially the vocal sample right before the drop like the bass is so impeccable i thought it was like i thought it was the exact same like cadence as as when they said ridiculous but um i don't know that, that was just a, a thing that in, in my head i was like oh this sounds very familiar but um otherwise i uh yeah i i, I the melody did sound a little familiar at the beginning but then that it was kind of like gone for a lot of the rest of the song it just kind of it transformed in this really intense um, track with an ending that was absolutely uh, just wild, buck wild. It just, it just like was sporadic and jittery and in your face, and it just had a lot. 
Um, that is one that, uh, again, feels really disjointed in the whole album run, um, but uh, individually in a vacuum sounds, that sounds pretty great. So, uh, but we've got four tracks left. Uh, so here we go. Let's move into the next one. This is Vroom. Uh, here we go. Here's Vroom. Call a side trance drop actually, or final a third one. I'm probably very wrong though. That's a hard go from mid tempo to side trance though. So. Again, another longer, like, 30-second outro. Some of these outros are a little too long for my liking, but um, that's besides the point. So, um, yeah, Vroom. Uh, mid, this is the mid-tempo that I sort of expected to hear from Virtual Riot. Uh, Given to You felt very res-like, and this was almost like a taste of, oh no, this is like, hand the reins over to me fully, Virtual Riot saying, and this is what I'll uh, I'll do. Had a bit of like a, I, I don't know if maybe just because I've associated now like the kitchen step style or tones or ting of it with like a funk, but a kind of gave off a little bit of a funky vibe at the end in particular, um, par- primarily with that, like the synth, the lead synth, but uh, otherwise was uh, probably a 
a better mid-tempo tune than Given to You, I will say. Uh, Given to You felt very, like I mentioned earlier, very like streamlined and a little bit more linear, a little bit more well-packaged and kind of um, brought together and honed in where this one felt like it had a little bit more ups and downs. It was a little bit more dynamic of a track with um, more going on, more happening at least. Uh, not so much structurally, but um, uh, with just the rise and fall of, uh, of the song in terms of like its loudness, its explosiveness and um, the smaller moments and the bigger moments. It just felt like there was more ups and downs than something like a given to you so uh, that one felt more aligned with what i expected from a virtual right mid-tempo track but um yeah another one that i, I actually really enjoyed in in a vacuum i think it's, it's pretty solid so uh, i enjoyed that one quite a bit so uh let's hop into our next tune though this is reconnect um we are in the back stretch for sure now so uh, here we go this is reconnect <laughs> Okay, what are we building into? Wow, we still got a whole half the song left to go. <laughs> this has been intense already. now we've like totally done a 180 almost very off like oh
show off. Oh, and the slow fade. Interesting. Huh. The slow fade's really interesting. A very, very interesting stylistic choice to do with two songs left and the next one being your interlude. Um, it makes it feel like the last two songs for the interlude and Holding On To Smoke are like a packaged finale. Um, that's, that's what it's prefacing as, almost as if they're like bonus tracks. Um, so, uh, okay, that, that song, uh, was, uh, another just like wild song, stylistically very different than what it came before, but also it's like totally the same. Like, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it at this point. It just feels like we're getting almost like tonal whiplash with all that's happening of all these different crazy sounds. And the, the, the thing is, it all sounds pretty great, honestly. Like, it all does sound still really solid. It just is so different from what we're hearing before. And I'm sure for some people, they really enjoy that. And others, not so much. Um, but yeah, this was a very, like, bassy lead with this, like, garage finale that just didn't... Not what I expected heading into that track for sure by any by any means. So, dang, okay. I'm I'm so curious where we're going to go uh, with this last uh, two tracks. So, uh, but let's hop into it. This is the, um, uh, the final interlude, I should say. The uh, Black Sands interlude. Here we go. And now we just have, like, an acoustic guitar, like... We're like 50 minutes into a 60 minute album and it's the first time we've heard like a purely acoustic guitar. Actually, that's not even acoustic, this is a harp. Yeah, this is a harp, who am I kidding? Such a weird stylistic detour. And that goes into the next song simultaneously, or like uh, continuously. That is, I okay, yeah. Like it's it's beautiful and it's great and it's it's great instrumentation. I I, I do love the harp and I I love the like the beautiful strings. I just don't get where it lands holistically in the album. Like where. What is this, like, we, we had this and Embark and we had the impending, whatever, like, this is, it just, they're so different. They feel like they're in such different wavelengths, these, like, interludes than the rest of the album. And so are we going to get, like, an actual concluding story here at this point with this final track? I don't know. So let's hop into it. Um, so here we go. This is the final track of the album, Holding On To Smoke. Uh, featuring Raven Gray. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, and I guess, like, I guess we, like, this is continuous with the interlude beforehand. But why? If it's just gonna fade out now, why did we do that? I'm ready for this to be like the grand greatest song of the album. Dense. 
bends here. Are we gonna do the ambiance sounds to outro this album? Is he gonna bring the rain back and the thunder? No, oh, don't do it. Of course, we're gonna end with the thunder. Huh, okay. Holding on to smoke. Um, that was a great track. Uh, probably my favorite track of the album, I must say. Uh, I really do love the more explicitly house tone to that one and house genre and how uh, it, it felt like in a vacuum, like I've said many times before. Great song, uh, like genuinely a great song. I think that had, um, I, I love longer movements. I love, and this was what, six and a half, 646. Like it's a long song and I don't, it didn't feel like it was that long. I will say there wasn't a ton of variation or different movements or uh, like tonal switch ups other than the kind of um, house to garage to like ambient intro and outro bookends. But um, yeah, like I, I, I liked it a lot. I, I think this feels like the most uh, well-packaged, polished individual track on um, the record. Uh, I, I think the vocalist was great. I, I think Raven Gray did a fantastic job on that one. I think um, VR did a good job of, of keeping um, their vocals all pretty clean, but also playing around with the processing a little bit more to give it a little bit more like a little bit of an oomph to it and um i thought it was a great album closer uh i, I really do i i think it was a pretty solid song so that was that was one i really enjoyed and i'm, I'm curious to hear uh more versions of that if, if that's going to get a little boring for me um I, I didn't love that it was a kind of a more or less a copy paste drop for the first and second um on longer movement songs like this or longer songs i feel like it needs to be a little bit something different but uh it, it was a little same samey but Oh, okay. Um, album as a whole, uh, because I know a lot of you just skipped to this point. Uh, yeah, I think individually the tracks sound great. I think individually the production is clean. It's polished. It works well. It's Virtual Riot in good form. Um, I think in a vacuum, all of these, uh, I would fit 13 songs if we're not including the like interlude intro part, um, sound, sound pretty good. Um, as a collective whole packaged album, I think it's really messy. Um, I think there is no real cohesion from song to song. I don't think there, I think the even mixing is off from one song to another. I think there's... Um, almost tonal whiplash that happens all throughout from one to another. I think the interludes are completely unnecessary. I think they're useless. I think there's no, um, I don't think there, there really is no story being told. And so when you have two interludes and then like an intro section that um, try to tell something or just have this ambient atmosphere um, that is so, like maybe there's a story and it's just not a surface level. It's one you have to know from other like lore of the album. I don't like that. I don't like when albums do that. Um, so I'm very torn on this album because I, I appreciate the songs individually for what they're doing. It's just so messy. There's so many different, um, tones and genres and styles and like, it, it is just, it's doing so much, um, that, Again, Virtual Riot's production is great. He is a master at his craft. Um, the songwriting, though, is just weird. It's just like there's so many different... Um, there, it's, it's like there was a bunch of different plans for where the album was trying to go, and he just couldn't land on what he wanted to do. And so we just threw it into a big thing that was just... and just sent it. 
Um, I just don't get it. Um, so in that sense, I like Simulation more than this record. Um, I'm not too familiar with his first, uh, his debut, um, so not enough to give a real full-fledged opinion on it. But Simulation did feel like a really well-packaged, put-together project that had a narrative through line and storytelling and um, tracks that sounded like they they met belong together. Um, this one didn't sound like the tracks belong together. Uh, and I don't know if I'm just a stickler for that in some capacity, and maybe... Some of you are listening to this and going, hey, I love the variety. I love the different sounds, the different genres all throughout. And power to you. Um, again, this is just my opinion. You don't have to take it as gospel truth. It's it's not an end all. But um, yeah, individually, I think the tracks were great. I just don't feel like, I didn't feel like I listened to an album. I feel like I listened to 16 individual songs, really 13 individual songs um, made by Virtual Riot uh, that were thrown together um, haphazardly, honestly. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of my, my thoughts on the record. Um, I'll have fully fledged opinions and a review maybe at some point, but, um, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm so curious to hear what you guys think about this record holistically, uh, because I'm just a little lost, uh, on it, but, uh, yeah, other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.